The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Now when the Pharisees gathered together to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. And when they had come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are many other traditions which they observe, the washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold fast to the traditions of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. And he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me as Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition, which you hand on. And many of these things you do. And he called the people to him again, and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a man which by going into him can defile him, but the things which come out of a man are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and so passes on? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a man is what defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a man. The Gospel of the Lord. It is the Gospel of my sins be blunted out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't see the forest for the trees. No one is exactly sure where that expression originated. We know when it comes about. It first appears in a collection of common proverbs in the 1500s. But it aptly describes the people that Jesus is addressing in today's gospel. The idea that someone can't see the wood for the trees, as the British version goes, is a reference to getting so bogged down in the minute details of a situation that you simply lose sight of the larger picture. The expression beckons a person whose vision is so obscured to step back from the situation and regain a wider perspective. We have to realize that for anyone, it's very easy to get bogged down in the minutiae and to lose sight of the big picture. And we should understand that this particular purification ritual that's mentioned was an accepted part of Jewish life and taught by venerable rabbis, but not actually a matter of divine law, the Torah, the law of Moses. Now in Exodus 30, there are two references to the priests washing their hands and their feet before offering sacrifice in the temple. 
And interestingly, these are just passing references, not actually technically commandments. There is a commandment in Leviticus 15.11 that reads, anyone whom he that has a bodily discharge of fluid touches without having rinsed his hands in water shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. And that is the extent of the Old Testament's commandments pertaining to washings. Although the post-biblical Jewish oral tradition of washing hands before eating, particularly eating bread, in addition to numerous other occasions, even just getting up in the morning, those all became universal and obligatory, but it did not actually come from the Bible. The rabbis and the elders said that this washing was implied by Leviticus 15.11, which mentions the principle, the idea, the concept of unclean things contaminating clean things. And so they simply took the ball from that point and ran with it. And no one seemed to notice that in that verse, the person remains unclean until the even, even after the washing. That is to say, the water technically didn't clean you. In another sense, none of that really matters. You remain unclean until the evening. You simply start a new day with a clean slate. Jesus used this occasion, this interaction with the Pharisees, to show how their priorities had become askew. They had become so concerned with the minute details about things on the outside, they forgot about the inside the really important parts, the heart. And they had done exactly what Moses had warned about. They let their human tradition obscure God's holy tradition. They had missed the forest for the trees. As he often did in these discussions, Jesus turns his listeners back to the interior life to look at these questions in the terms of the matters of the heart, as a matter of faithfulness. Does eating with dirty hands really defile someone in God's eyes? Does unclean food going into your body make you sinful? Or is sinfulness rather a matter of disobedience in the heart? Can anything they put in their bodies defile them before God? Or is faithfulness and purity perhaps better measured by what comes out of a man than what goes in? Jesus answered his own question, it is what comes out of a person that defiles. For from within, from the human heart, come all these evil intentions, fornication, murder, theft, adultery, all these things. These things come from within, from the human heart. They are the things which defile. Rather than carefully submitting to God's law, the Pharisees had kind of become their own lawgivers. Jesus also throws in this another example of Corban as an illustration of how they've substituted one thing for another. Corban means a dedicated offering, and Jesus was referring to a common occasion in those days when someone declared their family property to be a temple offering. It's basically kind of a tax dodge. And the effect of it was they ended up depriving their parents of support in their old age. And so they had literally substituted their own made-up, man-made rule for God's rule about honoring your father and mother. But in a sense, sin is always about substituting your own will for God's will. And these rules about hand-washing we're all about the idea that the bad stuff is out there. So I just need to keep that stuff from getting in. Because the corruption surely couldn't start from within. Now, of course, to be sure, there are plenty of things that you can ingest that are harmful. There are plenty of toxins that you can take in that will damage your health. And there are plenty of things you can take into your life Drugs, gambling, porn, drinking, stealing, 
All these things that pollute your soul, of course. But even then, the morality of those things is not so much out there as it is in here, the human heart, where the moral decision takes place, where you decide to turn away from God and turn instead away to seek pleasure instead. The impurity comes from within, but it doesn't have to be that way. True religion that God calls us to is a genuine love of God and an acceptance of God's love by an acceptance of Jesus as Savior and Lord. There is the washing from all impurity. It is to be intimately joined with Christ Himself in His death and in His life. True religion is to live abundantly, to let Christ live within you. True religion is a precious gift, a wonderful thing not to be squandered. True religion is always a matter of the heart, a heart submitted to the will of God, a heart on love with the fire of God, a heart filled with love for others. Jesus saw their hypocrisy and it reminded him of the way Isaiah once recorded it in an oracle from God. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Is your heart far from the Lord? Or does Jesus dwell richly in your life and in your heart? Invite the Lord into your heart anew every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.